Show me your face Then gird up my neck That I might stand in this holy place Show me your face Power and grace, I will make it through the end if I could just see your face. Moses stood on the mountain top waiting for you to pass by you put your hand over his face so in your presence he wouldn't die all of Israel it shines down through the age. Now you've called us to boldly seek your faith. Show me your faith, Lord. Show me your faith. stand in your holy place. Show me your face, Lord, your power and grace. I will make it through the end. If I could just see your face. David knew there was something more than the ark of your presence in a manger baby was born among kings and peasants all of Israel saw your glory and it shines down through the age now you've called us to boldly see your face. Show me your face, Lord. Show me your face. Then gird up my leg that I might stand in this holy place. Show me your face, Lord, your power and grace. I will make it through the end. If I could just see your face, I will make it through the end. If 
I could just see your servant is my key that we despised you you have loved us the branch of the lord has been revealed and by your wounds we have been healed all the nations stand in a wonder and say beauty beauty beautiful glory Glory, glorious, you are, you are, beauty, beauty, beautiful, glory, glory, glorious, you are.
past the outer court into the holy place. see your beauty let me see your face take me into your throne room let me see your beauty let me see your what you have been doing in my life. I thank you for what you're going to be doing in my life. I thank you, God. Refresh me tonight, oh God. Refresh me in this place. Refresh my physical body, my spiritual body. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. If that's what you want, say that's what I want. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We'll greet somebody as you, as you sit down tonight. We're going to, hallelujah, we're going to move on a little bit. Oh, I just felt like singing a little bit tonight. You know how that is, huh? Hey. Oh. Some I have to come over here since everybody's on this side. All right, come on over here. Everybody's over here, so I might as well come over here, you know. How's everybody's week going so far? It's good. Did did it work? <laughs> so it would be safe to prophesy. I see it. No, 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 I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm I'm not because it wouldn't be a real prophecy. I just I just know that. The car's broke. You got to get another one. So I'm just. <laughs> oh, man. Well, it hasn't been a bad week. It's, it's been a it's been a decent week. So. Uh, Micah, I'm, I'm just going to be uh, I, I got. 
what is it doing? Just open. There it is. As I was praying into to tonight, and um, I don't know, God still got me in that that Genesis Exodus area, right? Like like Sunday is going to be Joshua, you know, and uh, and and so I just I kind of I kind of kept looking at. Like Genesis 46, it, we're going to be in Genesis uh, and in Exodus, Micah, ESV. So Genesis 46, 2 through 4. This was some of our Sunday scriptures, but we're going to add a little bit more to them. And uh, so Genesis 46, 2 through 4. And it says, God spoke to Israel in a vision of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, here I am. Then he said, I am God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for there I will make you into a great nation I myself will go down with you to Egypt, and I will also bring you up again. And Joseph's hand shall close your eyes. Now, that, that statement right there, I will also bring you up again. I was listening to a preacher this afternoon after I'd put this down, and, and he was preaching about something totally different, and, and it was like, but what he said there to me was like, Dad, there is an end date on this. It's not a forever thing, right? Do, do you remember Sunday, he said 400 years? 400 years. God put an end date on their suffering before they suffered. <laughs> and I was like, bro. And, and, and then he starts talking about the widow woman with, with Elisha. The God, it, when, when Elisha spoke, I never paid attention to that right there. Then he said, yeah, go do this because God said there was going to be a famine in the land for seven years. So he had already put an end date on the suffering. So I started, and again, I put all this together earlier, and then I run across somebody that preached something totally different. But how, how just, just keep going, watch it, Genesis 46.3. I am God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for there I will make you into a great nation. Don't be afraid. So God's promises are, anybody? Yes and amen. Doesn't matter what we deal with, right? His promise is still yes and amen. Yes and amen. What does amen mean? Let it be so. Let it be so. I, there it is. Not, it's not dependent on how much Beverly believes it is it or how much anthony believes it right it's not his promises they are what they are because he is who he is because he is i am that i am and if you remember from sunday what does that i am statement mean i am i have been here before i am i am here right now i am i am in the future all at the same time i see when you entered that problem i see where you stand today and i see you when you're going to come out of it all of those things but we'll go to Exodus eight, uh, Exodus one. Mike, if you just pull up Exodus one, we're going to go eight through fourteen. So his promises are yes and amen. He already told them there was an end date, four hundred years. Then he promised them a second time that I'm going to take you out, and then Exodus one eight through fourteen happens. Now there arose a king over Egypt who did not know Jesus, Joseph, and he didn't know Jesus either. And he said to his people, Behold, the people of Israel are too many and too mighty for us. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply. And if war breaks out, they join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. 11. Therefore, let us set taskmasters over them to afflict them with the heavy burdens they built for Pharaoh's store, store cities. Yeah, Pithom and Ramesses. 12. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied, and the more they spread abroad, and the Egyptians were in dread of the people of Israel. 13. So they ruthlessly made the people of Israel work as slaves. 14. And made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in all kinds of work in the field. In all their work, they ruthlessly made them work as slaves. Whew. Wow. God's promises are yes and amen, though. I kind of titled this the in-between, right? The, the in-between where God promises it, and I hadn't seen it yet. <laughs> Anybody got any of those? Yeah. It's an in-between. 
Like, like Rylan the other day, he was trying to get on an airplane. The first time he was ever going to fly, his, the tires, he said, got on the tarmac. He could feel it. And they sat there for 45 minutes. And I'm sure it sounded something like this. <clears throat> Attention, passengers. Uh, we're having a slight mechanical problem up here, and we're going to have to return to the gate. And y'all have heard those before? And, uh, yeah. It sounded very similar to that probably, right? <laughs> so they go back. He never does get on an airplane. They finally had to drive all the way over to get Caitlin, right? Yeah. <laughs> so now he's stuck at an airport trying to get on the next plane. What happens? The person right in front of him gets the last seat. Anybody's ever flown knows that. Then the next flight is going to be at this time. I'm sorry. we were. Yeah, we all, if you've flown, you know these things, right? You know these things. Yeah. It's an in-between place. You're stuck. I've sat on a tarmac for hours in a plane. It was not fun. It was in San Diego, too. Yeah. But what do we do in the middle of that really kind of tells who we are and what we've learned. Because if you also remember a, a little bit further down, we, we're not there, we're not going to go there tonight. They, they were out in the wilderness. And what they learned was as they came through the Red Sea, they get over there. Now God wants to meet with Moses, right? We sang about that tonight. He's meeting with him up there and all these things, and they see the fire. And what did they say? Moses, you go deal with that. We ain't going up there. We're afraid. They backed away from the mountain. So Moses went up on the mountain. They took too long. He stayed up there way too long. So what did they do? They went back to Egypt in their hearts, even though they were not in Egypt anymore. And what did they do? They took all the spoils that God gave them, and they made their own God because they didn't like the real God's time frame. This one here, we can tell him what to do. <laughs> I just had this crazy thought. We do this. This is my God tonight, this water bottle. And he promised me that we're going to go over there to the other side of the room. And guess when we're going to do that? Whenever I want to. Because who moves him? You don't have to mess with that. I do. See, when we make our own gods, we're in charge of the time frame. But then what happens is we're in charge of the mess, getting into it, and getting out of it. <laughs> and that's why Jesus had to come, because we couldn't get out of it. We were stuck, right? And, and so, so that in-between place is a place that will reveal. It will reveal your true character. It will reveal how much you truly trust, and it will reveal how much you've truly submitted. In between. And we see that in the life of, of, of the Israelites. They had a problem. At one point, Moses even said, these stiff-necked people, you know. Yeah, it's just like these stiff-necked people you gave me. And it didn't matter what they did, right? He, he brought water out of a rock. He brought a manna, right? He, he brought them. They complained. He got this. God did everything that they complained about, but what was still there? Their character. Their character. See, changing that is a time frame. You get saved, and that's, that's part of that sanctification. It, it's got to change. See, they weren't saved, but God was trying to prove to them that, that you can trust me. You can trust me. But how many times do we not trust? And we do just like they did. I don't know about y'all, but I've done this numerous times, and my wife can give me a big amen on this one, I'm sure, but hopefully she will not tonight. We will see. That God gives us a plan, and it's taking too long, and then we go out and do it on our own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we make our own golden calf. But we didn't make our own golden calf. We went and bought our own car before God said we needed to buy a car, and we paid twice as much as we should have. We went, I'm not speaking that over y'all, I'm just, just, it was just an analogy. Right, you understand what I'm saying, though? Over and over and over God's promises are yes and amen. But when we don't see that promise, we're in that in-between place and we struggle. If patience have its complete and perfect work, why does it need a perfect work? 
because it's part of perfecting you. Because the more patience you can have to trust in God, the more submitted you will be, the more faith you will have, all of these things. Because it's in the trial, in the middle of the place, in the in-between place, that tries your faith, it tries your belief, your trust, all of these things. All of them. Now, I'm not saying I got it all figured out right now, but I do have it all figured out right now. Okay, maybe it's better this way. I'm not saying I got, I'm doing all of it yet. I'm not trusting 100% in all these ways. Let's say it that way. But the, but the truth is, is that he, his word gave us the plan. We just have to follow what? His plan. His plan. But look at Exodus 2, 23 through 25. Exodus 2, 23 through 25. Exodus 2, 23 through 25. 23. During those many days, the king of Egypt died, and the people of Israel groaned because of their slavery and cried out for help. Their cry for rescue from slavery came up to God. And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. God saw the people of Israel, and God knew. So now your groan of the in-between place has come up before God. But you're still not free. Because number one, your 400 years hadn't finished yet. <laughs> yeah. 400 years hasn't done yet. So then we go down to verse 22 of Exodus 1. I'm just going to walk you through. I'm sorry, Exodus 1, 15 through 16. Watch this. So, so God heard their cries in Exodus 2, but we're going to back up just a second and see what was happening. Right? I'm going to back you up just a minute. Exodus 1, 15 through 16. Then the king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Sipra, whatever that is, and the other Pooh. And when you serve as midwife the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a son, you shall kill him. But if it's a daughter, you shall let them live. Now, what is the enemy doing right here? Huh? Genocide. No, it's way bigger than that. Trying to kill your promise. So now you're stuck in the middle of this thing, right? Go down to verse 22. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, every son that is born to the Hebrews you shall cast into the Nile, but you shall let every daughter live. Every daughter live. Trying to kill the promise. Why? Just like Sunday. Because he knows as well. And he knows those groans are going to reach that throne room. He knows that that groan is going to reach it. So what is he going to do? He's going to try to make it look like you can't have a deliverer. You can't have a deliverer. So how was their deliverer going to come? They didn't know. He didn't tell them how he was going to deliver them. But all of a sudden, he starts killing all of the, the baby boys, which is telling the Hebrews if they would have been paying attention, God's trying to bring me my deliverance. And the enemy is fighting back. If you pay attention to the attacks the enemy is doing in this place, you could probably see how you're going to get out of it. Because remember, I really do think he sees some things that we're not able to see at this point. Then keep going down. Exodus 2, 1 through 3. Exodus 2, 1 through 3. Now a man from the house of Levi went and took his wife, a Levite woman, verse 2. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. And when she could hide him no longer, she took him a basket made of brussels, burl rushes, and daubed it with bit, bitum and pitch. She put the child in a place it among the reeds by the river bank. She sent him down the river on a boat. Sent him down the Nile. And we know the story. He grows up in the Pharaoh's house with all the wisdom and understanding of the Egyptians, and with the strength, learn how to fight, learn how to do all these things. So in the midst of the enemy trying to kill all of the babies, God works it out where the deliverer 
is literally brought into the Pharaoh's house and has the best of everything and lives there. And at the age of 40, he learns who he was. He kills an Egyptian and he has to flee. Now think for a second. All of these things have been happening. And now we're talking 40 more years of groaning. Sometimes those timetables don't happen overnight. I know we would like them to. I know we like our microwave. Put it in there, press one, boom, you let it go, right? Listen, man, I, 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 I've always joked about this, but I really do think it's true. You know, one, one of the greatest things, I, I remember my children being born. I remember their first words. I remember them first walking. All of those things were amazing. But one of the most profound moments in life is when I could, he, when, when Rylan would say or Richie, Daddy, I'm hungry. Put the, put the corn dog in the microwave and press one. And they could do that. That was a great moment. Because now they can feed themselves while I'm watching TV. Hallelujah. Right? Yeah. It, it's, so, so here it is, is. You know, we love that quick. But God doesn't always do quick. And you know what? We need to learn to thank him for that. But that's hard, isn't it? It's hard. Why do we need to learn to thank him? Because he's still trying to get something out of us because he knows if we carry that into that next season, that next promised area, it will destroy it. Look at how quickly the Israelites turned over back to a false god, which was what? They still had Egypt in them. How quickly people get saved, full of the Holy Ghost, on fire for God. And then all of a sudden, did you ever know Jesus? Have you ever opened a Bible? Right. And we've done some of those same things. Why did you do it? Because we're still battling on getting rid of those things. And that in-between place, that place where God has promised you and you're waiting, is a place where that is worked out. And we have to marinate. We have to soak to get rid of all of those things. Now think about this. For time frame wise. Moses was about 40 years old when he killed the Egyptian and left Egypt. And then. He stayed on the backside of the wilderness for 40 more years. 80 years. <sighs> Brooklyn, you'd have to be 80 before God finally did something with you. You going to wait that long? <laughs> right? Right? We, we suffer with that. But, but what if God promised you something and you haven't seen it come to pass yet? We give up. I thought his promises were yes and amen. Yes and Amen. So no matter what we're dealing with, no matter what we're facing, when we don't understand it, God, you promised me. Your word says. But it's yes and amen. Right? It doesn't mean we can't groan about it to him. But what we've got to not do is walk around social media and everything else about how bad it is. Because, you know, I remember something in the New Testament where Jesus was talking about the Pharisees and the Sadducees that when, when they began to fast, they did what? They made it very evident to everybody. Don't be like them, right? That's what he said. Don't be like them. They want everybody to know. Now, that doesn't mean you can't tell somebody you're, you're, you're struggling with something and, and have them praying with you. But you know what? Too many times, what do we do? We make it bigger than the promise. Okay, and, then, and, and so I'm going I'm to say this too. And, and, and then we've got the other part of that same picture is, is where, where they write out, my God, takes you 20 minutes to read it of how bad everything is, is but my God is faithful. Are you just figuring out that after you typed all of that? 
Because if you truly believe that, you the Holy Ghost would have had you delete it. Okay? I'm just saying. Just saying. Right? <laughs> the Holy Ghost has me delete quite a few things. There's things I've been wanting to post about. And I'm like, and I'll even start to, I know, I know better. I know, I know better. I know better. Just not going to go there. <sighs> you see some of the comments sometimes that we get. Every time I put communion on YouTube, I get the same guy comment, and I just delete him. He's from another denomination that believes that the bread truly becomes the body and the juice truly becomes, and I am never going to change his mind. But you know what? I used to think, why does he watch? But you know what? God's going to get a hold of him. Let him watch. Let him watch. Right? So, and complain. So this season... Do not give up. Do not give up. Do not throw in the towel. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. So, so I, as a track coach one time, we had a two-mile run going on, right? Two miles. That's eight laps. It's a lot of laps. Trust me, I used to run it. And the counter lost track. Counter lost track. So now the runners are running and have no idea how many laps to do, and they're fighting with each other, right? Uh, luckily, somebody had done some video, so they went back and they were able to figure out how many laps. But the runners don't know right now. And they're like, what lap? Just keep running. We're going to tell you in a minute. Just keep running. We're gonna <laughs> Y'all, it was the funniest thing in the world. But do you think those runners thought that was funny? Nope. Nope. And, and I remember doing a, a 5K in New Iberia, a 5K in New Iberia, and the motorcycle cop got lost. And I'm up there right behind him, man, because I, I was fast in those, and I, 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 run a lot, I used to win a lot of those races. And I am right up on This dude is lost, man. He has no idea where he's going because they didn't paint all the, the turns. But everybody's still following. <laughs> and we're not going to stop until we cross the – finish line of course once we all finished they had to send out buses to go try to find everybody else because we get sprawled out we don't throw in the towel we finish one more lap why because God's promises are yes and amen and before you ever got into that problem he had already given it an ending he works all those things that are bad to the good. Yeah, but what if I die in the middle of it? I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. Because then that means he's a liar. He promised. He promised. And God's not a man that he could lie. He promised. We do not throw in the towel. We do not quit. Like Pastor Flip will always used to tell us, what if you've been praying for this for 20 years and you quit and it should have happened tomorrow? You wasted 20 years of your life in this in-between area where God is still doing some things. Let him work it out so you can truly become the man or woman of God he wants you to be with the faith to move mountains and with a testimony that will transform lives. Imagine the testimony, right? Imagine the testimony, amen? So let me pray for us tonight, and, and we can go do what we, I just, I said, I just wanted to share this with you in between place father i thank you again lord for your presence in this place i thank you for all that you have done lord i pray right now for every person that is here you know if you're in that in between place right now and you feel us a little tough i want you to raise your hand just raise your hand guys look around go find somebody go find somebody that's in an in between place and, and just just pray with them okay that means you got to get up so, Lord, I pray right now, Lord, I'm, I'm going to pray for Pharaoh since he's the closest to me. Lord, I, I pray right now as we join in hands and we, we link with our brothers and sisters, Lord, we pray that you would move upon them in the in-between place. Lord, I pray that their faith would be strengthened right now. I release, Lord, just a, an injection of new faith into them right now, encouragement into their spirit. Lord, they, their body may need rest. Is there is there weary right now from doing all the things the enemy is trying to run them in circles? But I just release a, a renewing of strength into their physical body, into their mind, and into their spirit. 
Remind them of the promise that you have made. Remind them of that promise right now, oh God. Bring it back up in their spirit. Send somebody to them, Lord, and just continue to remind them of the promise you made. Because your promises are yes and amen, and you are not a man that you should lie. I thank you, Lord, that you have not forgotten about us. And you are still standing right here with us. You still have your hand upon us. And all things will work to the good to those that love the Lord. And you will be glorified even through this. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on. Shout amen with me tonight. Amen. Well, hallelujah. Listen, I love you. Thank you for for coming on Wednesday and worshiping and and being here with us. And uh, don't forget Sunday, we're going to have a great time. And also uh, next month, we're going to need some help on, on some of that stuff. We still have a little bit of time. Just be thinking about it. And we need to get some more help up in the media booth and in the children. And so it's your kids we're dealing with. So just, you know, you should want to listen. Hey, you know what? I just thought of something. If you don't have a kid back there, maybe you should try to help back there. And if you do have a kid back there, maybe you should help in the media. That way it'll keep you further away. That, that's a plan, huh, Ashley? So if you don't have a kid back there, you need to go help Ashley deal with some other people's kids. And if you do have a kid back there, then you need to go up and help in the media booth so you can get further away from them. And then, and then when something goes wrong, I, I'm sorry, I can't deal with them. I'm, I'm, I'm in the media. I'm sorry. See, it's, it's good. <laughs> Anyways, I love you. Thank you for being here tonight, guys. Stay safe out there and tell somebody about Jesus. Amen. We love you. God bless you.